Hello everybody and welcome back to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler and this is one of the wildest decks I've seen in Modern in some time and I have to shout out uh, the person who played the deck to a 5-0 league finish online, Internet Surfer 9 So I want to walk you through this deck here because this is a wild one that is going to be doing a lot of attacking. So as you can see in my guess from Goblin Guide here, we are an aggressive deck. We want to attack our opponents. You can see we're playing Goblin Guides. We're playing Reckless Bushwhackers. You know that means we want to attack quickly. Burning Tree Emissaries to help out with that plan. But this is where the deck kind of gets weird, okay? We have uh, this Artifact Package, Midnight's Ornithopters. Ornithopter has zero power. What are we doing playing that card? But look, it all comes together here with Koldotha Rebirth. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you sacrifice an artifact, create three one one red goblins. So we want to on turn one play out the ornithopter, sacrifice it to the cold author rebirth. That gives us three tokens that we can then play something like a burning tree emissary into a reckless bushwhacker with to attack, or we can pump them with signal pests. Thraben Inspector, a nice value card here, and nothing's better than tapping five creatures and playing a venerated loxodon. Uh, for free. So this deck's got a lot going for it here. It gets to play all of these colors. And oh, by the way, did I mention a Tarkus command? Pump your entire team for one and lightning bolt your opponent uh, if you want to. So lots of modes here. Really neat deck. Mana base fairly straightforward. We do get to play Horizon Canopy, which is nice. Onto the sideboard here. Also pretty straightforward. Burton Fortuner for Anger of the Gods packages. Path when you need removal. Same with Sudden Shock. In fact, uh, a deck again, it's doing well. Uh, and Sudden Shock gets it. So, Collector Oof for the Artifact deck, Scraft Diggers Cage, Alpine Moon uh, against uh, Graveyard Decks and Valcode, respectively. So, everybody, that is the deck. I'm calling it Goblin Rebirth. Thank you for watching. I know everyone might be stuck at home by the time this video comes out. Uh, I live in Oklahoma, and we are also social distancing ourselves. So, I'm at home recording content. I can still do that, even though. All the magic events that I typically work have been canceled, uh, which is unfortunate. But you know what? I can still make these videos for you. And thank you for watching. I hope this makes everything just a little bit easier for you. Help pass the time. But on to the games. Goblin Rebirth here on Mining Modern. All right. Here we go, everybody, with our Goblin Rebirth deck here. I think we want to keep this hand. Um, we've got a couple plays here that I like. Look, we can play this Stomping Ground Untap, put in a signal pest, cast one midnight. Next turn we can play one midnight and then surge out this bushwhacker. Attack for a lot, and then we have the Loxodon to follow up with also if we need it. So yeah, I'm into this start. This looks pretty decent here. We will certainly be swinging for a lot of damage on turn two. And since we're on the play, that works out pretty well here. So we'll see what they're up to, of course. Uh, looks like uh, Burning Catacombs could be... Obviously a Fatal Push in our future here, but we're actually pretty good against Fatal Push, and <laughs> we're probably even better against Noble Hierarch. All right, let's see what we draw here. Thraben, Inspector. Uh, not bad if we end up on this uh, value-oriented plane with the Loxodon and so on, but we'll go ahead and cast out our second Mimnite here. Fetch. Looks like we need White Man. We're going to have to grab a Sacred Foundry here. We are shocking ourselves here, but that's all fine. I mean, look, we're the ones going to be attacking for a lot of damage here. Here we come in all of this pump, the battle cry from Signal Pest and everything, plus one, plus zero. Uh, and just like that, it's turn <laughs> turn two, uh, and we're coming in for, for, uh, for 10 damage. So that was pretty decent here. Now, our opponent's at nine. Now, granted, our board is a little worse here, but Signal Pest is hard to block. It makes, uh, it means that we'd be coming in for seven. And we can play out this Inspector. If we draw land, we'll be able to crack the, cr the clue. Uh, and if we really want to, we can just uh, play out this, this Venerated Loxon on grow the entire team here. So our opponent's basically going to have to be playing a, a Noble Hierarch combo deck here. A, a Duskwatch Recruiter, Heliod, something like that, right? Ways to... Oh, okay, in fact. Well, fair enough. We can't block a Blighted Agent, so they could very well just have the kill in hand for next turn. All right, a Goblin Guide for us, though. That's actually, I think, a... Pretty good draw. Uh, it means we get it in uh, for a little bit more damage here. We'll see if it actually uh, makes a difference. It might. Do we force a chump lock this way? Our opponent does have a mana open. And they have revealed 
awarded foothills to the Goblin Guide. So they draw a card here, but uh, I think that was the difference because now we're coming in for lethal, uh, provided our opponent can't interact as they fetch here. Um, but Blight Agent's going to have to block. Okay, they're going to get the Dryad Arbor involved. That makes sense. Dryad Arbor can block uh, a Midnight. The Blighted Agent, though, so also block the, the Bushwhackers. So our opponent's going to take damage fall to three. Now we get to follow up with the, the value here and the, the Inspector. So I like that we somehow uh, were actually faster without even the Cold Oath of Rebirth, which is sort of the most explosive card in our deck. We were faster than the Infect deck. That's crazy. I hate playing against Infect. <laughs> and we have three sudden shocks in our sideboard, which are almost specifically for this matchup. So this is nice. And we get to play these Path to Exiles. Yeah, big fan of this. Okay, so Venerated Loxodon. Honestly, probably just not necessary at all. Go ahead and cut an Ornithopter here. I don't know how many of these artifacts you can cut uh, and so on and still sort of that not be an issue. So Atakri's Command can't gain life. Your opponents can't gain life. You Lightning Bolt them. You put a land of creatures you control. Get plus one, plus one. So nothing that interacts with their creatures. So we're just going to have these Path to Exiles, Sudden Shocks uh, for that. But I think you could probably cut an Inspector here. We just want to be as aggressive as possible while also having these five removal spells on our deck. So I think we can probably cut one Ornithopter, and I'm a little hesitant to to go deeper than that, to, to cut too many of those zero-cost artifacts, because uh, remember, that's what our Cold Author Rebirth needs to actually uh, be cast. So uh, you can't get too greedy with that. And look, this deck is accepting the variance of the opening hands, right? Because the opening hands... Kind of like that last one we had where you have a bushwhacker and things like that. Everything looks great, right? And th remember, this list has no goblin bushwhackers, so it's not an eight-whack list. Uh, it actually just has the reckless bushwhackers. So uh, that, you know, the, the pieces all really need to come together. But when they do, it's a uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool sight. Uh, so as it stands out, we're going into game two with seven uh, plus four. So we have 11 artifacts that we could sacrifice to the Kodalatha Rebirth, obviously, uh, one of these seven is uh, ideal. But I feel pretty good. Sudden Shock is the, the big uh, card here. It has Split Second. It's a two-mana shock, but Split Second means your opponents can interact with this uh, via the stack. It, it, the players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. So outside of something like, you know, Morph, right, unmorphing a creature to counter a spell, Sudden Shock can't be stopped, and that means we can... Uh, just shock down our opponent's uh, blighted agents and so on in response to a pump spell, and they can't cast another pump spell or a hexproof spell or any of that in response. So I don't think the rest of this would help. Don't need the oofs, cages, the moon. You know, for what it's worth, Ornithopter can block a uh, an Ink Moth Nexus. Midnight can't do that, but I think this is what we want here. Uh, we'll see what opening hand looks like, because the nice part about our deck is even if we kind of have some a little bit of a clunker but it has a sudden shock something like that our deck will at least be able to put on some damage here make our opponent interact so here is a pretty interesting hand i think i'm going to keep it just keep in mind we you know we're playing a 19 land deck here um and we do have a lot of two mana cards and you can end up mulliganing a lot so i think i'm going to give this a shot look this hand is this is a very good hand, just not against this deck, against Infect specifically. Um, you know, the Inspectors are great value. The Atarkus Commands can really help you uh, go fast. But uh, against Infect, we might have hoped for a slightly more interactive hand, but they have no one drop here. We get to play an Inspector out. Next turn, if they you know, were to just slam a, um, a, a Blighted Agent or something, I'd actually get to bolt it. So all in all, this uh, not so bad for us. And drawing a Burning Tree Emissary there... Not bad. It allows us to curve it into one of these cards. Uh, doesn't give your creatures haste. It gives them reach, so it can't attack with us. But uh, if we draw into a bushwhacker or something like that, uh, Burning Tree essentially amounts to a free spell. Assuming the follow-up is red-green, of course. Our deck does have some white spells. All right, but let's see what our opponent is up to here. A Noble Hierarch on turn two. Can't say that I care about that too much. Probably should untap. Oh, there's the, uh, the Glistener Elf. Okay, well... Changed my plan slightly here. I was going to untap and bolt the Hierarch, but uh, now I think I'll be bolting the uh, the the Glistener Elf. So, uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to go ahead and fetch for a Stomping Ground. Uh, use the Sacred Foundry to play the second Thraben Inspector. 
all the clues we'll ever need here. Lightning Bolt down the Glistener Elf. Uh, and start the beatdown. So, here we go. Yeah, I mean, look, we had a piece of interaction here. We've got some creatures out that will give us a long-term value. Next turn, we're going to play Burning Tree Emissary in the Signal Pest. Uh, if we draw a land, we could also play an Atarkus Command if we wanted. Our opponent's going to have to do a little bit of work here to kill us. And Spell Skate, I don't think matters. Yeah, our abilities don't target. Obviously, this protects them from removal, but... Without an infect creature in play, it doesn't go very far. Uh, all right, so burning tree into signal pest it is, I guess. Yeah, this doesn't help too much here. Could crack the clue. Don't think that's worth it, though. Uh, I think I'm supposed to just play this out. We'll, we'll lose access to a mana here. I, I think that's... You know, obviously the Path to Exile is a, is a perfectly reasonable draw. I might have rather drawn a uh, a land, but Ceremonies Rejection on the Signal Pest. So our opponent has two cards in hand. We have three. They still have a high life total. Uh, I'll poke in for probably one damage here with one block going down, but next turn we can start firing off some Tarkus commands. Um, we won't be able to take out the Spell Sky. We'll be able to get pushed through a little more, bit more damage uh, plus bolting them. Depending on how things play out, we could end up cracking a clue. But yeah, this game's going to be really difficult for them if they can't find a uh, infect creature. Uh, <laughs> blo uh, cycling the, the Dissenter's Deliverance here. Guess they didn't want to destroy my clues. You know, this is a real thing. They can win with a Dryad Arbor beatdown with a Noble Hierarch too. It's actually a 2-2. I'm going to block. I don't want to randomly die to pump spells later on in the game. All right. The follow-up is another spell skite. Okay, well, look at that. I guess we weren't attacking through any of that anyways. Inspiring Vantage. What the heck am I supposed to do? Attacking is no good. These Atargus commands, you get, you know, they're essentially just lightning bolts that only get lava spikes. Instant speed lava spikes, I guess. I guess I'm just going to crack a clue. Uh, we have white one drops, so I want to keep that in mind. Yeah, sure. We also can keep up the path to exile. Not that that matters a ton, but hey, there we go. Coldolfa Rebirth. Now we're getting somewhere. Perfect draw. Sacrifice the clue to this. Have the tokens in play. Now these Atarkus commands start to look pretty good. This is a really neat uh, synergy in this deck here with the Inspectors. Uh, you don't typically see them in decks like this, but it sure works out. And now we're going to have a biggest swing back at our opponent. Also a Bushwhacker. Something to keep in mind. I'm probably going to save that for next turn because it involves pathing something. But happy to fire off an Atarkus command here in combat. This is going to do a lot of damage to our opponent. If it resolves, they do have mana open. And three cards in hand. But... This is nice. And the next turn, if we really want, we could path, you know, something like the Noble Hierarch. Probably just gets redirected to a Spell Sky, but path and then Bushwhacker and, and get in for a lot of damage that way. Okay, so I would like to deal three damage each opponent. Creatures get plus one and gain reach. This is also nice because it's just a no downside attack. Even if our opponent counters this Cryptic Command, uh, Atarkus Command, which they don't, we still would have gotten in for damage and lost nothing, but... As it stands now, we happen to get in for way more. Here's six coming at you. So they do have pump spells. They could use them here in combat to actually remove my creatures via the spell skites. Uh, and I think that's probably a pretty reasonable play if you're sitting on their side of the table. You see us trying to swarm you, and you just need to clear out the board as best you can. But, uh, wow, it's actually a dismember here. That's rough on them. They were going to take two damage from that thing. Instead, they took four to dismember it. But I think they probably have to do it. And here we go with the Vines of Vastwood on this spell sky to take out the other one. So I'm tempted to path it. My opponent either lets it happen. No, that's silly. I, the only way I lose is if they find an infect creature. I was going to say, it, it, and also there, they, we have so many good draws for us, but I could have hit that one with a Path to Exile. My opponent either lets that resolve, then we get to keep our creature, uh, or they pay two life to redirect it to the other one, so they still get to eat our creature in combat, and then they've paid two life, 
and they're just dead to the Tarkis command. But I think reasonably the only way we lose at this point is to an infect creature. So uh, I, I don't know. You could argue it's always going to hit them, but as it stands now, with their life total uh, dwindling, I, I think that you know, kind of saving that in our back pocket is is a maybe uh, get them to a position where they can't even redirect it is where we'd want to be. But uh, here we go, land tapped. So this is kind of a tough call here, but I guess I have to just go for lethal, right? So we're gonna swing with three tokens here. Our opponent can block two. Uh, we had Targus Command. That means in theory, one of them gets through for two damage and we deal three damage to our opponent via the command, but uh, looks like they're gonna fetch here. Might have shenanigans as we move to combat. You know, the, the other side of this is that if they have... Hmm. Okay. Let's say if they did have removal, then they have the blockers for the other two even through this, but... This seems to be working out the way I want here. I'm just going to go ahead and fire off this... Uh, well, no, I don't even need to. I just want to deal one damage to them. I just pass the turn back. We can play around, uh, play around, you know, spell pierce or dispel or something like that here uh, pretty, pretty decently. And we're under no pressure from my opponent at all. If they were to try to attack and put lethal on the stack via uh, double becomements or something, I don't even think that would do it. But uh, I, we just have the game at instant speed here, so... Feeling pretty safe. And I'll just go for it here in the end step. Make them spend their mana if they do have it. Alright, here we go. Can we take down Infect with the Bushwhacker deck? We can. Nice game. Called Doltha Rebirth for the win. Filling our board with goblin tokens there. That's exactly how we drew it up. That was a great match to start things off. Let's jump into the next one. Hey everybody, here we go. More goblin rebirth. And we do have a cold author rebirth and the zero drop artifacts. Just missing that one thing we need called mana. So ship that one off. This looks like a keeper. As a matter of fact, this hand looks pretty reasonable. Quite honestly, I can bottom... Hmm... I don't even know what I want to bottom. I guess I'm going to bottom on land pretty easily here. And then we have a lot of options. We get to sack the Ornithopter to the Rebirth on turn one. Now, the thing is, I believe this was actually a deck in standard. Uh, and at the very least, when it was a deck in the past, you could actually play Mox Opal in a deck like this, which you could sacrifice for zero to your Rebirth. But also in cases like this, think about it. If we had a Mox Opal in this hand instead of a land, uh, we could turn one... Ornithopter to Rebirth, play Mimnite, play Signal Pest, and be attacking for like 8, 9, 10 damage or something on turn 2. Pretty sick. Uh, but it's our opponent who gets the free artifacts over here. Bobbles and Breeding Pools. And a Gilded Goose. Alright. Too good for Standard. Hello, Modern. Uh, I assume we're against some kind of Urza deck here, but I do think we have a pretty good hand ourselves. I guess it's fine to just play the mountain here. Play the Ornithopter. Play the Cold Author Rebirth. I mean, hey, I guess our opponent has the food to counter us, but uh, I still am happy with this. We put four 1-1s into play on turn one. Uh, on turn two, we'll have a Signal Pest, but we'll also have a Rising Canopy that we can cycle for another card. So this hand is about all you can ask for in our deck from a mold of six. I mean... The only way it probably gets better is to find a bushwhacker in some way to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, whatever the mechanic is, surge, surge it out in the second spell we cast each turn. But, all right, so our opponent gets the turn back here. They got the bobble they didn't crack, a goose. They're going to go ahead and look at it now. So they have three mana if they want it. No Okos, though. Not too long ago. Might be an Oko, but no Okos. Um, not too sure what this deck has for three mana. That's scary. It's, there's so many different ways these decks, uh, sort of exist and win now. There's all the, the, the combo ones. There's a, these grindy mid-range value ones. There's, there's a lot to these, uh, Simic, uh, artifact decks these days. So we'll see how our opponent wants to play it here. Fortunately for us, our turns are fairly straightforward. 
Uh, draw a card, play the signal pest. Maybe play another card, attack, pass the turn back. Very straightforward. Our opponent just going to fetch and pass, though. Uh, not too sure what that means. They're going to draw up to five cards in hand here. Wow, look at that. That is not a bad one. We had a goblin guide here. This will play around the uh, four spike. Okay, attack with all creatures, please. We've revealed a Misty Rainforest, so our opponent has gotten the value off our Goblin Guide. It's happened, but on the other hand, it's turn two. We slammed for five damage, and we're threatening even more next turn here. Signal Pest hits the table. All right, they didn't do anything with their mana yet. Now it's our ends up. They have three. What's it going to be? Create a food token. Well, okay, that means nothing. I have to assume that that is very good for the good guys over here. Not often you call the goblin deck, the goblin guy deck, the good guy. But hey, playing against uh, uh, Urza, I think it actually applies. Plus, we did something objectively cool, right? Imagine if we got you know force negation <laughs> or something. That wouldn't feel great. Although I guess it would be a, uh, it'd be a, a two for two, so to speak. So uh, okay, here um, I guess it's just time to go to combat. Gilded Goose can actually block our signal pest. So if they had a a pump spell, or had something buffing their creatures that would actually get it, but let's see what they want to do here. Uh, looks like we're going to get Cryptic Commanded as we go to combat, so okay, fair enough. On the plus side, though, uh, we have this Horizon Canopy to cast our Thraben Inspector, and we are going to get a card draw this turn. We get to crack this clue rather than having to crack the Horizon Canopy itself, so uh, we're going to be a little mana efficient, keep more mana available. Uh, in case we draw, you know, a two-drop and a one-drop or something when we untap. Uh, and our opponent's trying to hide behind Cryptic Command, but having to sacrifice food tokens to do so. So they're under a lot of pressure. I mean, now any attack from us basically represents a lethal. So it's going to be very difficult for them to advance their, their board state while also uh, trying not to die. I mean, obviously playing Urza here would be pretty good. They'd have the, uh, the construct that came with it, but we'd still be able to sign for a lot. And depending on what we drew, it could be... Uh, lethal anyways. Also worth noting, I mean, we're going to get three shots at even drawing a relevant card because we crack the clue, then we draw for our draw step. Then if we still flooding out, we get to crack the Horizon Canopy. So, uh, and we'd have two mana available after that. So, yeah, I mean, we have a very high probability of adding to the board in one way or another next turn, which makes this really the critical turn for my opponent. You know, if they have more cryptic commands they just may be stuck doing that and uh or they can play urzas or whatever else they have in their hand to actually try to uh get to a point where they they can win the game but i see that they are going to think about how exactly to do that uh, they could also i don't know keep something open play something small uh, sacrifice a food token for life gaining three life pretty relevant against us i think it's very interesting that these are the goblin tokens it shows uh, it makes sense. These are the Scars of Mirrodin Goblin Tokens, where this card was printed from. And these are the ones in the art, but this is a weird, weird Goblin Token, right? All right, our opponent's down to nine. They're cracking the Misty. We have, uh, for what it's worth, when we attack, we're going in for two, five, uh, seven, plus six, 13 damage. Our opponent only has one blocker, so... Uh, they're dead to our swing right now. They have to interact with the board one way or another. We just have lethal on board, uh, no matter what we draw. Mystic Sanctuary putting Cryptic Command on top. Okay. I guess if they crack their, their food token, maybe they don't die. And then they could draw that Cryptic Command and not die again. But they still have to have a way to advance the board here. All right, Urza's is pretty good. This is what we were concerned about. Now they do have some creatures on board. They can also, I guess they technically have a counter spell open. Or maybe not. They don't have. Yeah, the Metallic Rebuke is open as well. And we know they have a Cryptic on top. So, yeah, I mean, that they took a long time to do it, but that makes sense for them to try to get back into it. But that might do it for us. I won't lie. Uh, yeah, let's attack. Attack all, please. I haven't done the math, but I do assume this will be enough. We know they're revealing a cryptic command here, so uh, that's not going... I, 
So th they won't be drawing an extra card here. And I think that they're just dead. I mean, I don't know. Math is for blockers. <laughs> I'm not going to look at their math and figure what it is. I'm just going to cast this cryptic command after they declare blocks uh, and assume that it's enough. I, I mean, with the lightning bolt to the face, plus anything that gets through, we need to get just two creatures through. Yep, looks like we'll be able to pull that off. So, all right. Simic Wurza. Looks like we can take one down. I guess force and negation would stop us here. Uh oh, did I misclick through it? Oh no, what a disaster. Fortunately, my opponent is still at three life. <laughs> All right, that was that was unnecessarily stressful for a moment there. All right, on to the sideboard. Oh, whoo! Okay, so what the heck do we have for this deck? I guess the Path to Exiles. Um, I guess this works. It doesn't stop Urza, but it does stop a lot of the cards they play with. Um, Alpine Moon doesn't matter. The Cages can't cast cards, and they can't cast cards from spells. I think we might be okay there because they, they can still Mystic Sanctuary their stuff back. Um, and I don't think we need the Forge Tender. So, all right, let's start cutting to the top here. Try to figure this out kind of similar to how we did last time. The Inspectors, I think, are actually good in this matchup, though. I just play two, oof. Oofies, I think. We'll give this a shot, I guess. I'm not positive. I might get burned by cutting those artifacts. Hmm, guess not. I gotta keep this hand, I suppose. It's certainly not exciting, but... Uh, I mean, we're gonna empty our hand by turn turn two. Yeah, I mean, we get to we get play... The question is whether I play the Inspector first or I play the, the Goblin Guide first. Not a decision that comes up very often. You know, the argument is that the in, the break-even point is, what, turn turn three or something? If I play the Goblin Guide on turn one, I deal two. But then on turn two, I do two. So by the end of turn two, I've dealt four. Meanwhile, I could play the Inspector on turn one, Goblin Guide on two, and I've dealt three. So it actually makes sense uh, to play the Goblin Guide first here. Even though typically you want to play the non-haste creature first. Uh, but in this circumstance... Uh, I think that this makes sense. I, and I'm assuming this because, um, you know, sort of the long term is less important because I assume our opponent's going to play blockers by, by turn three or four. So I want to get as much of that initial damage as I can in early before I get to the point where I have to uh, start attacking, you know, sort of chump attacks and hope for blocks or so on. So, uh, okay. I actually might be able to just fetch for a mountain here. I guess there's no... So may as well do this. Play the Goblin Guide. Well, I have to say, this deck is very efficient, if nothing else. Our opponent did get his Steam Vents off in Goblin Guide there. So we're behind in the card advantage war. But look, we have some stuff in play. We're going to need to play a Thraben Inspector and a Lightning Bolt next turn. Untap to a draw step uh, and the ability to crack a clue if we need to. So... We're going to put some stuff onto the board. The Lightning Bolt wasn't a bad draw. Uh, we're just going to have to see if we can get enough damage in. All right, that was some behind the scenes right there, everybody. <laughs> my microphone uh, is sitting up on my desk. It's in like a... Um, a, a, a little tripod to hold it up because went just went plummeting off my desk there. So, uh, whoo, okay, sorry about that. That was almost a disaster. I was worried this thing was gonna still work when I picked it up, but it looks like we're good to go here. Uh, meanwhile, our opponent playing the uh, the turn two Gilded Goose and passing back, so that's not bad for us. I get to bolt it here. I'm just gonna get a basic mountain this time. Bolt the goose down. Uh, I guess we could get spell pierced or dispelled or whatever here. Fortunately, we didn't. Play an inspector and uh, get on in there.
got to attack with the Ornithopter to send a message always. So, all right. Our opponent is Ashram's Arkel Arkham's... Ar Jesus. Arkham's Astrolabe on top there. They have a Gal Blast for our Goblin Guide. So, all right. The Goblin Guide gave them one card. We're going to get one card back with the clues. So, fairly even there. Uh, but our opponent, we both interacted with each other's boards a little bit. They get to play the freebie Arkham's Astrolabe here to cycle. And they also have the Uro. So, this is the real problem. And uh, we will be getting the Graph Digger's Cages in here. Yes, it's Uro, Uro Urza now. Sure, why not? That, uh, that was pretty gross. So now we'll see what we can do. All parts of that card are good against us, as it turns out. And this will filter them into the mana they need to uh, escape it. So yeah, that's going to be pretty hard to beat. Won't lie. All right, well, well, we'll do what we can do. I mean, we'll play out this Burning Tree Emissary here, crack a clue, uh, and sort of hope. And, you know, that is one of the draws that could conceivably get us back in the game. Um, and depending on what happens next turn, we, we have our opponent at all of 15 life as they can escape in, our, in Uro. So looks like we might be going to game three, but I guess if we were to draw something, you know, something like a Signal Pest maybe, uh, and then we played a Bushwhacker as well, I mean... That would probably do it, right? We would be attacking for a bunch of damage such that, you know, our opponent getting to, to block something with Uro wouldn't even really be the end of the world because they'd be so low. But uh, instead, our opponent going for the Emery and the Astrolabe here. So I guess this is maybe the more conservative path on their part that doesn't uh, lose so path to exile or something. Um but this this opens the window a little bit for us, right? If we hit a, a good two drop here, and or you know a single pest or whatever, and then get a surge of bushwhacker, we're gonna get in for a chunk of damage. All right, so fingers crossed here. You know, midnight. Uh, not exactly what I was looking for here, but I will take it. I'm gonna shock my. I guess I'll play around quench. I don't know. Um, cast with surge. I I. I it, I guess I can't spell Pierce the Creature, but they could quench it. Uh, Metallic Rebu Rebuke, unfortunately, we can't pay for. It's an Ether Gust, huh? I guess I have to put that on the bottom. This is so embarrassing, I can barely attack. Yeah, I mean, surging that out would have been huge. We would have had a much more substantial attack this turn. Uh, put our opponent to where at least we'd have a threat, when, even if they were to play Uro and pass, but... At this point, I don't think we can beat them just, just simply casting the card. Yeah, and they do. They already pay this. They can filter any color mana. They definitely have the five cards, so this could be what happens. They also get to, to free roll something with the Emery here. This card's nuts. Merfolk, I might add. Best creature type. All right, here comes the Urza. That, uh, this, this can't be good. <laughs> they have four or five artifacts they can tap. That's a, this game's just over. I'll see what we draw, but we're just dead here. All right, <laughs> well, I guess we'll take our redraw. Yeah, that's not going to do it. I can make the one ones, uh, but I can't do anything with them. And look, they can, they can just get to start doing this already. That's five artifacts they can tap for mana. Because uh, Urza adds the mana, not the artifact. Gets around so many sickness. So we have died there in that one. Yeah, the problem here is how many cards we have to board in. Right? There's only so many things I can board out. And, you know, do I want something like the, the you know, more cages, the collector roof? There's, again, there's only so many things we can we can cut here. I mean, we cut a burning tree for uh, the other oof, I guess. I mean, the oof is at least a 2-2 a two -two that beats down. I would like to play first. Let's see what we can get here. All right, I'm in. Uh, this, is, this is actually a very interesting hand. This hand is going to do a pretty reasonable amount of damage very quickly. Now, this is a circumstance where I will be playing the uh, the Signal Pest 
uh, here on turn one. Going to go ahead and fetch. We, we ideally want to have double red on turn two, so uh, I'm going to fetch, uh, giving us that possibility, but it just makes the most sense by far to play out the, the signal pest, the midnight this turn. Next turn, we get to play one Goblin Guide. If we're fortunate, two Goblin Guides swing for a ton of damage, untap a target's command, win on turn three. Look, it's all right there if we find a red source on top of the deck, and even if we don't, this hand is still super reasonable. It's going to be Goblin Guide for two turns in a row. Um, but yeah, I mean, fetch land, something like that off the top of the deck, and we are off to the races. This is the kind of hand that can... I mean, this is modern these days, right? We have to actually line up something like a turn three kill to, to be able to beat our opponent, because by the time they untap on turn four, it feels like we have no chance. Um, at least Monix Opal is gone, though. I will say that. We'll see what we can do. Our opponent leading on a fetch land uh, doesn't hurt, by the way. They either have to... Obviously, it, it they're going to take one damage from it. At least that's great. But depending on what their hand looks like, you know, they sometimes can't fetch the basic. You know, obviously, in this case, with the Astrolabe, they can. But every point counts. All right, they're back up to seven. We find a Lightning Bolt, another red card. Uh, but that kind of just is what it is. And it's just time to get on in there. Hopefully we don't give our opponent too many cards off the guide here. Ah, they revealed an Urza, huh? So, on the one hand, it's a great card for them. I don't want them to have it. On the other hand, four mana is a long way away. As we're about to, uh, we attacked for six, that uh, five that turn, I guess. We're about to untap and uh, swing for eight. As our opponent just trying to dirtle with the top of their deck with the Astrolabes. That's, that's not going to be good enough against uh, a deck that's got two bolts waiting in reserve to go uh, just go to the face here. And there's the other red source, so this is pretty good. I cannot lie. This was a pretty nice hand. So play the Goblin Guide. Go green, red. Three damage to our opponent. Pump our own team. Swing on in there. It's a bunch of triggers. Our opponent has two lands in play, and they're just dead. That's how you do it in modern these days, everybody. Thanks for watching. All right, I guess we're going to play some more, but <laughs> thanks for watching that game. Now, that was great. 2-0. Oh. Let's see Let's see if we can round it out with a win. All right, here we go. Trying to finish it off with our Goblin Rebirth deck. And this is an interesting hand because Signal Pass is not the artifact you want to sacrifice the Goblin Rebirth, but I think we can basically throw the Goblin Rebirth out of this hand and still have a good hand. So uh, I think the play is going to be Goblin Guide on one, or is it Signal Pest? I guess it's Signal Pest in this case. Um, we'll see here. We get to untap, play the Inspector, play the Goblin Guide, uh, get in there, and then uh, try to attack again after that with our command. Or we don't have green mana yet, huh? So this hand actually is going to need some help one way or another, either uh, a green land to open up the Atarkas command or another artifact to sacrifice to the rebirth if we don't want to get to a position where we pitch a signal pest, which I don't think I want to do. Ah, yeah, our opponent's going to make it a little easier here with this Inquisition of Kozilek. You know, they probably take the Goblin Guide. Oh, they took the rebirth. Wow, they really did make it easier. Okay. And a Bushwhacker is not bad. We're going to need... Look, we're going to have to do some work to get there uh, to where we can actually play that card, but uh, I won't be sad when we do. So here's the thing. When we untap, we're, we're going to get in for three damage this turn. Um, hopefully our opponent doesn't get a card off the guide here. Let's say Meyer. They did, unfortunately. Uh, but look, if we, we get to untap. If we hit a green land, uh, we can play the, the command. If we hit... I mean, I guess an, uh, uh, no, no cards allow us a bushwhacker right away, but we could crack the clue um, if we hit nothing, and our opponent is just not going to do anything, and I get to draw a goblin guide here. And I'm pretty sure I play. It's a little awkward. You know, we only have two mana to work with, and we're still kind of being, um, you know, greedy with that mana, but I don't think we can pass up another goblin guide. I mean... We already gave him one card with the Goblin Guide trigger. At this point, I think we're just committed to the beatdown. 
Uh, and said it's an Inquisition of Kozilek revealed, so no harm done. Uh, and this is a big attack. I mean, what is this? Eight damage coming in at our opponent. They're dead next turn. Going to have to burn some removal here, I think. They did the right thing. They let the trigger resolve before they fetched. See what they wanted to draw. They did not want that Inquisition of Kozilek. Uh, now there's a Gurmag Angler on top. They uh, got to try uh, a chance at the second trigger. They're going to push one of them down, but they're still taking five, falling to nine here. Oh, I take that back. Wow. Okay. Well, our opponent had some removal to work with. Fatal Push and Lightning Bolt. The Goblin Guides are down. I mean, this is not perfect for us. We're reduced to swinging for two damage a turn or something here that isn't very good. Uh, our opponent will be playing a Gurmag Angler, so I suspect for the moment the beatdown is done. We got our opponent down to 11 life. Uh, that is what it is. Now we have to try to put together a wide board instead of a you know a, a board with just a few creatures. We need to be able to swarm our opponent to death here with this Bushwhacker and this Atarkas Command. So we'll see what we hit on, on the draw step here. An Ornithopter, huh? Well, that's an interesting one. I can Ornithopter and Bushwhacker getting in for the Bushwhacker gets blocked. Our opponent takes one, two, three four, five, six damage and goes to five? Actually, I actually don't think that's worth it. I cracked the clue. Another Tarkus command is not very good. I don't know. This is a pretty awkward hand here. Um, yeah, second command is pretty rough. It, it is six, and my opponent's gonna get ag aggressive here. It is six points of burn. Putting our opponent to five, you know, that would, uh, that, that makes these lethal. So we might consider that here. See what we draw. We draw a lightning bolt, huh? Okay. Well, now I have to go for this. I mean, my, my opponent, I guess I can't even have a cryptic command. So it's not that, which is good for us. This is a big attack. I mean, they, I don't know if they were supposed to attack or not. Uh, it seems hard for them to win if they don't. But at the same time, now we get to come in with a, a pretty huge attack here. What is this? This is three, six, eight, nine damage. Yeah, I mean, this should put him to two, which would leave him dead to the lightning bolt, but all right, Snapcaster, Fatal Push. Pretty good for them. I think they still end up taking, they can clear the board. Uh, well, they're probably gonna Fatal Push a Signal Pest here, actually, I imagine. Snapcaster's gonna block the Reckless Mage. All right, the Fatal Push actually hits the Inspector. Uh, the Bushwhacker gets blocked by the Snapcaster Mage. All right, so we burn some stuff out of our opponent's hand. We got him down to eight. Now we can poke him for one a turn with the, the Ornithopter, basically. Uh, the signal, signal Pest can pump it to be a, a, a one-two flyer. Our opponent's at seven life, and we have nine points of burn in hand. If we can draw some green lands. As a matter of fact, if we draw a green land off the top, in theory, we could just untap and kill our opponent. See what they're up to. Well, Thoughtsies away are Bolt, so we got two points of damage out of that one rather than three. But all in all, not that terrible for us. Wow, this is great. Look at this. Okay, okay, okay. Now I have to do this because I need to pump my team. This is insane. We actually get to play Burning Tree Emissary off of red, red mana, filter it into red, green to do three damage to our opponents and pump our team to swing for lethal. Wow, what a crazy uh, way to win this game. Burning Tree Emissary, the mana fixer that it is, winning us that one against Grixis Shadow. That was crazy. I don't know what their three cards were, but that was nice for us. Whew. All right, Path to Exiles, get on in here. That game was great. All right, I'm cut one Loxodon. Cut one Ornithopter as usual here well i don't want to cut an emissary now after that but i think the loxodons are pretty decent here our opponent has a lot of one for one removal uh this really rewards us for going wide which is you know what we want to do anyways uh the burton fortuneers might no well it's grixis but i think they're probably more likely to have black uh removal than anything else okay so do I want the cages for the Snapcaster Mages? I don't think so. I think that the cages are for those decks that we actually can't beat. 
when they bring stuff back from the graveyard. I don't think that uh, Snapcaster Mage falls under that. So I guess we'll just do this. We got Path to Exiles for the uh, the Death Shadows later. We've got uh, still an aggressive curve. We got enough artifacts, and I guess I have to keep this hand. I mean, it does nothing on turn one, at least currently, which is you know not great for our nineteen land deck that's playing a lot of one drops, but and zero drops for that matter, but. Uh, it's hard to pass up Burning Tree into Burning Tree into Reckless Bushwhacker swing for nine on turn two. So uh, imagine how good this hand gets if we do draw something we get to play on the first turn. We did not. But like I said, not actually a problem here. We get to swing for nine on turn two. Uh, and then I think it's nine again on turn three plus the Targus Command Bolt. So 12. I mean, just lethal, right? That in theory will kill our opponent here uh, on turn three. If all goes according to plan, of course. Now our opponent just passing back with removal here, so highly unlikely to go according to plan, but, you know. The, the great news, uh, the great thing about this is, even with this sort of not going perfectly according to plan uh, or anything like that, we're still going to play multiple creatures, so our opponent needs a board wipe to, uh, to deal with this, or they spin their, their point removal to deal with it and their tax because we got four free mana out of this turn. So, oops, I didn't want to play the, I want to play this. That was close. I was talking, almost went on autopilot there. But uh, yeah, here's the thing. So we come in for nine and my opponent either has a sweeper, in which case, yeah, they could get the card advantage, but they're taking nine this turn. Or they have point removal, which they use... Uh, here in combat to minimize the damage but then like i said we get that four free mana from those emissaries and it's really kind of a no-win situation for them and if they do untap into a sweeper here the damage has been done they're at nine we have you know bushwhacker in hand we've got a lightning bolt here and we're going to find opportunities to, to probably get in the the remaining damage to finish it off for him here even if they had and he can't even be anger the gods I don't even know. I, I mean, I'm sure there's cards they could have here, but yeah, tough situation for them. And that's what happens. I, they probably felt good. We didn't have a one drop, no Goblin Guide or anything this game. No crazy Kodotha Rebirth uh, on turn one. And they're like, ah, oh, whoo, dodge the bullet. And then we should attack for nine on turn two out of nowhere. But uh, Collective Brutality, pretty good for them. They, uh, I think they chose all three modes. Uh, I couldn't, uh, they either gained life, but either way they killed our creature Removed our Tarkus command. So, uh, see what we hit here. Nothing great. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and crack this. Gross. All right. Well, we are flooding out, but we still get in for four. Collective Brutality was probably the best card our opponent could have there. Uh, very, very difficult for them to, to dig out of that that scenario but it looks like they had two collective brutalities I actually had to pitch one so that's pretty good for us now let's see what we hit here ornithopter that'll do it at least to the extent that i i i'm that's enough for me to go ahead and pull the trigger on this uh, reckless bushwhacker here i was cons i didn't want to play it this turn even though it would represent lethal because you know if my opponent has something we're completely blown out but it's hard to say no to this so all right it gets countered Drown in the lock, but look, my opponent's down to two cards in hand and now one life. So our hand doesn't do anything, but we do have a redraw with the rising canopy and a deck full of lightning bolts. So it's going to be pretty difficult, I think, to lose this one here. Looks like we're going to in a position to pull off the three and zero with the Kodolta Rebirth, the Goblin Rebirth deck, and get our uh, stomping ground out here. All right, let's uh, let's move to combat. See what happens here. They've got something. Yeah, Snapcaster Mage does it. Snapcaster Mage. Uh, oh no, they don't have a removal spell in there. All they have is the Thought Scour, and they're gonna die. <laughs> No fatal push, and they couldn't cast a collective brutality or the drown in the lock, and the burning tree emissary goes the distance. Oh no, the the did this come out of their hand? Wow, okay, just kidding. The the fatal push was in their hand the entire time. 
Well then, I guess that changes things a little bit. Here I thought we were done. That's funny. I guess we could have halved that in one, but uh, we'll give that a shot again next turn. You know, I I don't know. I I guess the it made sense to go to combat immediately, but you know, I guess drawing path to exile there shows that had we played that slightly differently, we could have won in that scenario. Um, now I think we're going to anyways as we untap here and uh, path the Death Shadow, but it's not over yet. Okay, it's over. <laughs> Everybody, there you go. 3 and O, oh, undefeated with Goblin Rebirth, Koldotha Rebirth, doing work in modern. Everybody, if you're stuck at home, if you're working from home, if you are looking for some ways to fill your time, thank you so much for watching my content. Uh, maybe share it with some of your friends who are also looking to kill time at home. Listen to uh, all the content and watch all the content here at Cool Stuff Inc. Uh, my videos, Punting, Pioneer, and Mining Modern are out every Thursday. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.